Welcome everyone uh, and uh, welcome to this uh, new meetup. My name is Frédéric Passon and I'm part of the HP Developer Community Program and I'll be hosting this uh, this meeting today, uh, replacing uh, DJ having a break for once. And so I think we're reaching nearly 30th, the 30th uh, iteration of this uh, meetup. So we'll be welcoming today Gardo Lopez, Ron Dharma, and Paul Murray uh, from the uh, DFCC API family, uh, I would say. And uh, so they'll be telling us about everything that you need to know about this uh, new or existing APIs from DFCC. And before we start the meeting, and I'll give it a few minutes for people to join in, obviously. So we'll wait just uh, some more, just to see how many people are coming in. And uh, I'll have to go through a few housekeeping items. So uh, I'm not seeing the participant list, but uh, I'll be waiting just a, a few seconds just to be sure that uh, we get a good number of people. And uh, whenever everybody's ready, we'll be kicking off the, the meeting itself properly. So. So as you probably know, the uh, the developer community program is uh, has many different assets. Uh, one of which is the one that you're attending today, which is a meetup. And uh, should you be willing to, or should you not knowing yet what meetups are all about? Obviously, these are monthly series that we uh, that we deliver. Uh, there are usually in depth uh, type of a uh, program on a, on a given technology. Uh, it could cover things from HP, from open source. Uh, they are usually dev related. Uh, there are uh, four coming events uh, that are already ready for the month of May on the 29th. So we'll be using the HP GreenLake for Red Hat OpenShift to migrate, modernize, and run applications smoothly. It will be delivered jointly by Red Hat and HP people. And then on June 26, uh, we'll be looking at implementing centralized key management in HP GreenLake with Stellis. Cypher Trust, and it will be delivered by Talis people. Obviously, there are other uh, other possibilities in our program, like the Munch and Learn. So these are more industry agnostic type of uh, talks. Uh, these are also, also monthly based series. And uh, the next one will be taking place in June on the 12th. And it will be how it will be about digital twins and uh, how they help companies reach their sustainability goals. And it will be delivered by some HP colleague in the name of Colin Bash and Kelly Chrono. There are also much more you, you could learn about the, the developer community. I mean, obviously, you could learn by attending our meetings, but you could also, you could also learn by doing some hands-on labs type of experience. So the workshops on demand are here to help you out in doing just so. Uh, so there are actually more than 30 uh, workshops in the catalog right now. They are based on Jupyter Notebooks technology. They're available 24 by 7 completely free and they're available for everyone, meaning they could be an HP employee, a partner or an end customer. Uh, please give it a try and provide some feedback. I mean, at the end of every workshops in the conclusion, there is a, a small survey that you can fill up. It takes only a minute or so. It will be very useful for us to, you know, see what are the tendencies that we need to follow and the requirement that you may have or feedbacks that you may give to us. The community program is obviously a community and without anybody in the community, without anybody amplifying or contributing, this would not be a, a proper community. So we'll definitely ask you to join and invite people to our talks, should they be internal or external customers. Uh, they can join and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Okay. Uh, they can also join some discussion in Slack, should they, have be, should they be having some questions about APIs, uh, well, that's the place they could go, and we have dedicated channels that they can uh, and workspace that they could use uh, on Slack to to ask this question. Uh, if you're on X or Twitter, uh, and if you're a Twitter guy, you can uh, you can sign up there and follow us. We have a, an handle there. And if you are a subject matter expert, like the three speakers that will be that I'll be handing over very shortly. Uh, you can help us in writing some blogs. You can also deliver some sessions, just like they will be doing in a moment. And you can contact me, for instance, and uh, propose me to work on the workshop. Uh, I mean, I'm currently working with Don, for instance, on a backup and recovery service-based uh, uh, workshop on demand. So with that being said, I think I can leave it to you now. I mean, 
everything that you need to know about the developer community program is all in this single slide. You can scan the core code. And uh, with that being said, well, now I can stop sharing and I think it will be Ricardo who will be kicking off. So Ricardo, the scene is all yours now. Please uh, take over. Yes. So for, first of all, uh, you know, welcome to, to this uh, meetup. Uh, to, welcome to the session. Uh, my name is Eduardo Lopez, and I am a, a senior product manager uh, in the in the in the data services organization. I focus in several areas, one of them being the the APIs, and also with me is uh, Paul Morey, who is the chief architect for uh, APIs and several other areas in the data services. And then we have we also have uh, uh, Ronald Dharma or Ron, as I like to call him. Um, who uh, who is really a, a technical product manager who uh, is is playing a, a very important role here in helping us uh, evangelize what we're doing in the with the APIs in particular, but also a large on everything that is happening on backup and recovery. Uh, so please get to know Ron and uh, a pleasure and a privilege to be here uh, with both of them. Uh, next page, please. Okay, so briefly, I'd like to um, do some introductory remarks. Uh, first of all, uh, here is what we have uh, for you today. We're very excited about sharing all this information. I'd like to spend uh, a few minutes just describing very briefly um, the evolution that we are having in the way that we are approaching the API framework uh, for the data services. And then, um, you know, the, the, the main purpose of the, of the session is, is to give you a technical overview on what we have to offer. So I'm going to turn it to both Ron and Paul, who are going to take turns in uh, basically describing to you uh, what are the APIs that, that we have available today, uh, what, what is the framework and the architecture behind there, how to access the material, how to use them, and uh, what we have uh, inside for you as we move forward through 2024. Uh, we will cap up everything with a, 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 an application, right? We will have a demo for you so that you also can have a taste of uh, what does it take to, uh, to use this. And there are plenty of resources that, that the team has developed and there will be reference to. Next page, please. Let me start, uh, though, by, by giving you a little re recap of, uh, you know, how we arrived to where we are today. Uh, I don't know if you recall, but uh, data services was the first application that we introduced in the GreenLake platform. Uh, it was the spring of 2021 when we introduced the, the application. Um, we have a set of data services divided in two. Uh, data services for infrastructure management and data services that had to do uh, with, with um, data movers, right? They, whether we want to do a backup, we want to do protection, we want to do disaster recovery. So there were data services and there were infrastructure services. Uh, we capped it all that with a unified API approach that at that time was very data services oriented. Uh, we postulated that we were an API first um, application, right? We provided the control plane so that you can have a single endpoint, a single namespace in order to access all, all the all the uh, capabilities that we have to offer uh, to you at that point in time uh, via the APIs. And the objective was automation, right? So if you wanted to access our capabilities through uh, your own framework, your own automation, we wanted to make sure that you have the means in order to do that. Now, uh, we did that uh, back then, uh, but fast forward to where we are today with the GreenLake platform. Uh, the GreenLake platform has really evolved uh, into being a very rich set of multiple infrastructure and, and data services that include not only the storage organization, but also, or, or the storage domain, but also compute networking and several other applications. So what we are doing uh, is we're pivoting our data, our uh, API strategy. We're moving from a place where we were very data services centric to really uh, be more platform centric, right? We want to provide a framework that of, out of which the data services is part of, but not exclusively the only part. Uh, so the goal remains the same, which is to enable automation for everything you want to do in the GreenLake platform for the infrastructure and, and managing uh, management of the other services. 
However, we, we are aligning to uh, this plant for centric approach, um, pursuing ideas like the routing centralization. So you, go, you have a single point of access to all, all our APIs and the idea of uh, unified uh, authentication so that you know, things can be more easily managed and you don't have to you know, have tokens all over the place. We have also extended the way we understand support for the APIs, not, not only to include the APIs by the, it themselves, but also to include the support that is needed for, for the larger ecosystem. Uh, next page, Ron. And, and by ecosystem, what, what I mean is what is beyond the, the, the data services. Um, the way that you might look into this is, is a stacking approach, right? Where, you know, so far we have been talking to you only about the northbound APIs, which are at the bottom of the stack. But you, what you will see, um, you know, as we progress through 2024 is more information about all the other pieces that will be important so that you can more readily take advantage of what we have to offer. For instance, along with the APIs, uh, you would like to have uh, notifications of certain key events um, having to do with what you, the automation that you're trying to drive. So we have a webhooks approach um, that will be for which we will talk more um, in this presentation and later through 2024. Um, the issue of support is very important. So we are including um, ticketing tools for, for integrating with our support organization so that there is automatic escalation of issues that you might have. And then finally, uh, it's important to have a more uh, native or, or a more formal support for different automation tools, right? So if when you're deploying all this, you're using tools like Ansible, Terraform, and several others that are available in the market, uh, we want to progressively, right, um, later in the year, start introducing to you to some, some of those um, so support elements so that they will be available to you. And then a more formal uh, support for things like CLIs and syndicate. So bottom line is we're moving forward with a strong API framework. Uh, what we would like to share with you today is what we have with the Northbound APIs, uh, but we will be talking along the presentation and throughout 2024 and some of the other elements that we will be uh, adding for you. And so with that, uh, I'd like to uh, turn then the session to Ron uh, and then start talking a little bit more concretely. Okay, so what are these APIs? How do we use it? And where do I get the documentation? So Ron, let me at this point turn it to you. And uh, thank you. again, thank you for your participation, guys. <clears throat> Ron? Thank you. Thank you, Edgardo. Hopefully I can be heard. Yeah, so uh, before we're gonna be discussing about the uh, planning or the, the, the things that are happening with the API of data services, I have one poll just to figure it out, you know, what are the, our audiences? I try to figure out, yeah, there we go. So we're actually going to see some poll. Please go ahead. And uh, I like to understand, you know, if you guys have already used any of the data services that are available in the uh, GreenLake, HPE GreenLake. So let's give it about a couple minutes. And let me know, Fred, when it's uh Yeah, we've got 30% participation right now. It's increasing. So we'll give it maybe 10 seconds and- 10 seconds more, okay, perfect. Yeah. Do you wanna, well, you wanna show the result or? Uh, go ahead, Prophet. I mean, I, I don't know where, where the results is going to pop up, but in any case, you know, I'll... Okay. So, okay. Should I stop now or... Okay. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, let's let's stop now and then let's okay. try to figure it out, you know, so, you familiar. Know. Ah, there we go. Thank you. So, almost like everybody has some... Um, experience are actually aware of these data services that are uh, available inside the HPE GreenLake. And uh, that's a good, in, it's a good information for us. So uh, hopefully, you know, all the conversation that I have here, you know, presentation makes sense to everybody. Thank you so much for the uh, polling. So let's move it forward. There we go. So the API if you have, if you are aware about all the uh, the news about the HPE GreenLake, had been released, you know, since two thousand twenty-one, 
And I want to call that as actually call the existing API. One uh, fact about the API is that it's actually posted and then it's posting is available in this data in this URL. The, so this, this is the particular links that where you can download the API. Now, this API is available and has already been posted and then can be downloaded both in the JSON form or the YAML form. So all of our API is actually presented as in the open API standard specification. And with that, you know, you can download the specification either in one of this uh, file and then use it for use any, any kind of the uh, open API tool to provide the conversion, you know, into a different uh, maybe API libraries, or maybe that you guys can use it also for testing or even you're creating a mock-up server and documentation, you know, so, so many other tools that are available and that can provide any type of the use cases with the open API. As of today, that API is called version 1.5. I believe that's what it is because that's the last time that I dig into it. Now it contains, you know, some uh, APIs that are related to data ops manager uh, uh, operation. And then I want to call it data ops manager group. And then some APIs belongs to the block storage. And then uh, I call it the block storage group. And then the rest that contains the API that is required, not necessarily managing the storage on prem, but also, but it's actually being used because it, it it is part of the configurations or maybe that the uh, setting that is required of the HP Green Lake. So that's the API available from 2021. And I want to talk about you know the flow of the authentications and how that people are using the API because that's where we are going to see the differences on the commonality. Well, back in 2021, we realized that, you know, the HPE GreenLake is published. So it's actually, it's available to access. And then I wanna show, uh, point to the fact, this is the original, you know, what we call it, the link toward our gateway or the, the HPE GreenLake uh, uh, main menu, page menu. It's called the common.cloud.hp.com. And then, as everybody are aware here, since you guys are using, <laughs> I've already used GreenLake in one way or another, it's a cloud-based type of the uh, applications, which is running, hosted, you know, in the cloud. People log in through the, uh, the their, their uh, website. And then that's actually, you know, a secure hosted website accessible through the, uh, through the web. And then inside there, then we know that that's where we are actually accessing all those applications or services that you are aware of that, that is actually presented in the uh, in the poll. You look at it, what Edgardo mentioned, originally, we only have one type of application or service. It is called the Data Ops Manager. And it's kind of sitting its own page. It's called the uh, Data Service Cloud Consoles. You know? I mean, today it is, but I will actually show you the difference moving forward. And then the API is actually provided since that date. So this is all API driven. We're making sure that, you know, and customers is actually making use or benefit out of the uh, GreenLake. They can also provide the automation. The, the important part about here, I want to mention that the three regions that are actually available at the time of the release of the HPE GreenLake. And then we, namely, we know the US West, AP North East, EU Central. So those are the three regions where these applications is actually is available and provided to the customers so that they can, you know, everybody can actually deploy these applications in the region, which is nearby to the on-premise uh, data centers where they are located. So one in Europe, one in US, and then one in Asia. Now, how does actually user um, gain access or be able to perform that API? It's very secure. So I want to repeat that again. You know, we always put the security as the basis for all of this uh, API uh, uh, use. So a user that has the uh, permissions will log in through the uh, hpegreenlake.com. Uh, actually, the the gate, the the, the front end, <laughs> the cloud, the cloud at hp.com, and then will become authenticated. So through the username, password, through the multi-factor authentication using the uh, additional third-party tools like the tablet, 
And then also there is a, a SSO that is actually allows for managing all these users. The user that has been authenticated will go or will actually use the uh, one menu, we call it the API gateway. In the API gateway, that's where the authentications and the security of the API is extended. <clears throat> so we use the client credential, part of uh, 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 authentication, part of the OAuth 2, and where the customers can then, you know, obtain the client ID, the client secret, you know, both of this can then be provided to the applications that we're going to be using uh, uh, this, this API or going to consume this API. So that's why I call it the client apps here. So you can see that there is a delegation of the security based on the user that are authenticated. And we also make sure that the API, which is basically uh, being used, you know, is represented by the access token. And the access token itself will expire every 120 seconds. Will that way that it will force the client apps to re-authenticate with the HPI, with the green lake to ensure that you know the <clears throat> the AP, the application that is actually is connecting is really is still the same so we're trying to mitigate that all the connections are protected by the uh, secure uh, SSL you know it's HTTPS so uh, that, that is one of the uh, basis of the REST API and then uh, it's all going to go through this particular set of the URL now note that the fact that you know this is the original so the existing one the 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 the, the format of the url it start with the base url and then the base url will correspond to depend on on the region where this api is going to be uh, is actually i'm sorry where the where the uh, on premises data center is deployed slash api slash v1 and then there is also API group. So usually that uh, contains whether it's a storage systems or anything like that, that talk, talk about the components that are on-prem. And then of course the resources. So these are this is the, actually where the API is actually is introduced back in 2021. Now, what are resources that are available? So here are the three different groups that kind of give you the idea what are type of the API resources that are available? And the groups, there are three groups. The first group, it's called the data ops manager. And then that's kind of correspond to the data ops uh, manager service, which is available inside the uh, data services, you know, Cloud Console today. Um, it, it, it's, it's actually being used to manage the storage array. And then any onboarded storage array from many different versions that we have there from Electra 6,000, 9,000, 5,000s, MP to, as of today, you know, they can't be managed in the sense, you know, uh, the, the, uh, they can't be actually controlled or properly uh, adjusted, you know, settings, you know, <laughs> or maybe that, you know, discovered also the other part, part important about the API, you know, how many shells are there, how many disks are there, whether they are uh, the storage pool is configured, you know, how the way the storage pools are configured. Everything is available through Data Ops Manager. And then the second set of the API, we call it the block services. Now that deals about provisioning of these resources, which is the storage volume that can be consumed by the host. And in that, you know, you'll see all type of the API that deals with the uh, creating that connections, you know, from the storage array to the uh, <clears throat> to the to the servers, and that also applicable for different type of the array that we bet uh, that we actually can be onboarded inside the uh, GreenLake. And the last one is the miscellaneous, and then that's actually deals with the configurations of the settings of the environment. Uh, if you could see that, you know, you probably will see there is a commonality with the uh, uh, the global API that is actually is presented before in the Munch and Learn, you know, which is by, by the DVR for Fred and the team, you know. Uh, eventually, all of this APIs that, that talks about here in the miscellaneous, you know, will be carried over into the platform itself. So now we're gonna be talking about, you know, what is, what are the new API will look like? Okay, um, Fred, can you actually do one more poll to, the next poll, I just want to figure it out, you know, what are the interests of the audience? If the audience are 
familiar with the Green Lake, uh, they really, you know, need to do, what are they doing need to do with the API? And then these are, you know, try to understand how you guys are using it. So oh, the poll is up, so people are Excellent. starting answering. Excellent. Right. Okay. So I'll give them, yeah, like uh, 20 seconds maximum to answer the, the poll. Okay, thank you. That's 30% <laughs> participation, 37, reaching 40. So if we get 50%, then that will be good. Excellent. Okay. I don't think that people are answering anymore, not so much. Okay, let's take a look at the result of the poll. <laughs> uh, the poll now, and here you go. Oops, sorry, share the result. Uh, okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, okay, ah, I see, I see. All right, okay, oh, well, just like me, you know, looks like there are tons of the API enthusiasts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't code every day, you know, but I definitely live and then, you know, kind of uh, enjoy the conversations about API, you know, any kind of the uh, application programming interface from GraphQL, you know, API gateway, Lambda, everything. Excellent. But let's, but uh, even though those are not actually using it, I think this is the important part that I want to actually address. And then that's like, because we are actually going to come out with a new set of the API, but uh, you'll be trying to understand, you know, well, we got the existing, we got the new sets. Why that we need to actually discuss about it? Because, well, this is the conversation. Let's take a look at HPA GreenLake today. And then this is how it looks like. When Ed mentioned at the time that we release, yes, it was pretty, uh, I should say, sparse. <laughs> but nowadays, you can see that the HPE Green Lake consists of a very rich services, applications, you name it, you know, whatever that we call the resources that we can make use to, in order to manage your, you know, cloud, whether it's on-prem or, 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 or is a, is a, it's a public every different use cases, every different type of the, uh, the, the resources are available today. From the HPE GreenLake platform itself, we also add additional capabilities, things that actually is important for the customer. Things such as, for example, here, notifications. So, you know, we would like to be able to be notified if things are going down <laughs> or if things are actually, or even if things are running properly, you know, so for the Green Lake backup and recovery, today we're sending out emails every day to, to ensure that the users is well aware how, the, how their backup runs every day. And then uh, the data services itself, you know, this group of the uh, applications or services called the data services, it used to be data ops manager, but look at this today. We have storage fabric manager, we have file services, block services, we have disaster recovery, which is basically is the acquisition of Zerto, and then it's made available here in the Green Lake. And of course, you know, we got the uh, the backup and recovery. So, so that's probably one of the biggest uh, uh, cloud-based application that are currently being used. Uh, storage management, private cloud business addition here for managing the uh, hybrid cloud. It's there, it's part of the data services. And beyond that, we're talking about networking as a service. We're talking about compute as a service. And then we also all include the access to the uh, private cloud enterprise, which is a special uh, uh, hybrid cloud management, you know, for, 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 from, from uh, other offering that involves uh, the, the, uh, uh, the service uh, team from the, from the HPE services. And all of this are sitting on top of the customer on-premise, whether it's whether it's private cloud or edge, you know, so it can be sitting on-premises or in the cloud or even sitting, you know, basically as a robo. Everything will be managed on uh, using the HPE GreenLake. The, that's the main reason that brings out the importance of um, addressing this because you know there are a lot other resources or components that must be able to be programmed that we need some more API to, to deal with that. So how does that look like you know today? Of course, in the HPE Green Lake today, we have this particular manual called services. 
under the services, you'll find what we call it the service catalog. So all of the application or services that was mentioned before, you know, they group up together under each of the catalog. And then we are actually pivoting, you know, to follow this framework. And then that in that framework, you know, all of the services that used to be part of the data services cloud console, it will be under catalog called storage or actually moving forward. I'm sorry, this will be called data services. <laughs> so all of them will be called data services. It's those services that deals with managing your data ops. That's how, you know, I don't want to be marketing wise. <laughs> That's how I call it. You know, it's, it's any services that allows you to manage uh, your, your data ops operation. Now, it's still the same though. You know, you got components here that manage the infrastructure services. And then you have all other applications that are actually sitting on top as a cloud-based type of services. So that's called the data protections and everything like that. And then you got all the API documents that is actually uh, uh, available, you know, for each of this service uh, uh, API that is related to that. Now, but what are the things that change though? Well, look at this. HPE GreenLake change, and actually the login has become console.greenlake.hpe.com. But maybe the look are different, but they are the same. You know, they still are hosted in the cloud. You know, they are still making available, you know, the API. But look at this, you know, the number of service portfolio has already grown up. And we also still have the API gateway. Uh, but one thing that we know, there is additional region where this service is actually deployed, which is called the EUS, you know. So you have additional region that where you can deploy your applications where that's going to be the one of the endpoint for the or base URL for the API. But the rest are the same. Still is the user has to be authenticated. User will get their uh, client credentials information in order to execute the API. And then the API itself, you know, is actually provided through the talk, uh, the access token. And then that's actually has a 120 seconds of timeout. Uh, everything is the same, you know. So whatever the API or whatever that the scripting that you have been using or strategy that you used before, it's available. It's just that we need to probably pivot in terms of the um, the, the, the URL that, they, that it will be, will be used for this. And then we're going to discuss about that. All right, so these are the new services that was introduced. We got the data services group. We got the, I'm sorry, these are the APIs that are actually introduced in March 24. We have those that are part of the data services group and that those are part of the data services group, you know, carry all the components or all of the APIs that are required, you know, to be used not necessarily part of the uh, the uh, not not uh, it's is actually a common for the different type of APIs that are available related to the other services. So, for example, here we have this API called the async operations, and then that's equivalent of the task ID. If you so, if you look at the uh, HPE GreenLake, you have a task menu that will be the API to use that. And then we'll, I'll do some demo here to make sure that you guys are well aware and familiar. What, what do I mean by that? And the rest of the groups here are related to that application of the services itself. So the virtualization here, you know, deals with the, with the management of the on-prem uh, hypervisor manager and also the cloud hypervisor manager. And we have the backup and recovery group. This deals with the fact, how do you manage your backup? How do you invoke your backup? How do you create your protection policy? And then how do you deal with the fact that we got so many different assets that need to be protected? And you have the private cloud business addition group. This, this, this currently is a little bit thin, you know, it's minimal, uh, but it allows uh, people to use this API to discover. Number one is to discover, but number two, you know, to create the VM provisioning policy. And then also, you know, basically deploys uh, or, or support some of the uh, 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 actions or use case that will be required. And it will be in the demo. So I promise a lot here. <laughs> Hopefully the demo works. All right. So we got existing, we got the new one. They seems to look different because, you know, one is download from that uh, one URL and the other one sits basically in the developer.greenlake.hp.com. So those are 
the, a the new APIs, they are all introduced and then presented in a different website than the first one. But regardless of that, you know, I want to actually present you this particular uh, proposal, you know, that they are all related. But the question is, Ron, how do you make sure that they can be used together? And how do you convince me that these are actually are unified? So we got these pictures that kind of give you guys the idea of how things are going to be used. So yes, you are going to deal with different groups downloaded from different websites. They have different format in terms of the URL, but they will be used together. And then in here, I actually uh, creates this particular concept like a onion peels probably. <laughs> so you got layers basically. So the, the legends here introduce you the uh, groups that are the, uh, that are made available. So in the sense that you know the legends give you the idea when is it actually is published and probably and also ideas where they are actually is accessible. So you got those that are existing published in, in 21, those are already released in 24, and then those are, are coming. And then in the picture here, you know, you can see the, the, the list of those uh, API and then the state of them, such as the backup and recovery has already been released, disaster recovery coming up, coming up pretty soon. I'll make a block about it. Private Cloud Business Edition has already been uh, released. Block volume, oh man, that's been released in 21. File next also, it'll be coming. And then there, there are other APIs as, as, and so on. But the key over here is that, you know, the API that are categorized as common here is actually sitting as the outer layer. So if you think about it, you know, all of this API for these different services, you'll be using this common uh, API group in order to perform that execution. Whatever sits in the middle, it will be actually also utilizing, you know, here, I'm sorry, what are the, this inner layers and uh, the, the middle layers are actually utilizing the, the, uh, the APIs on the uh, outer layers, but they are providing supports for the inner layer. So if you think about it, all the applications that actually accessible, you know, that depending on the group, they are actually sitting in the middle. So you will use all different type of the API from existing and, the, and, 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 and actually is current and the future, you know, all together. But there is a plan to it. And then that's why I brought Paul, our chief architect for the API to make sure that, you know, we, we, we know exactly where we are going because Edgardo has already said, eventually it will be unified, but how in the world are we gonna unify that? And that's where, what I need to address. So important part here, a note, big note here, outer layers, you uh, will actually be involved in the use cases of the inner layers, okay? All right, one more time, one more presentation to convince everybody that they are actually are used together. And then these are the API that existing, these are the API that is actually, is, uh, that has already been published. You get the authentication or the access token from the same page, that's it. One note though, you will need an access token, one access token per region for all data or for all services that are part of that region. So that's when you are actually creating the credentials. You have to make sure that when you do it for your applications, you are well aware if that applications belongs to a particular region, then you need to use the access, uh, the kind credential for that region so that you can use the access token for that region. If they just not cross right now, but all of the services, whether it's GreenLake backup, whether it's PCBE, whether it's data ops, part of a region are using the same token. That is today, okay? All right, so what's ahead? And then this is the time for me to actually bring Paul to discuss about, you know, what's going on in the future. So Paul is our, uh, is a distinguished technologist and he's a chief architect for the uh, data services API family. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, so there's not a lot here that I'm going to say that's not already been said in some form, but I'm going to repeat it. Um, the work that we've been doing up until now has been to align the APIs with a common standard that's across the whole platform. So that's why we had the original form of the APIs, the existing ones that one was talking about. Um, and then we've got the newer ones coming out. Some of the ones that are coming out are actually services that already exist. 
It's just that the APIs are in the process of being rewritten to conform to the new standard. And we didn't want to release them in the old standard until uh, you know, we, we'd done the job. So the new standard is similar, is similar to the old standard. It's not significantly different, but it's different enough. Now, one of the things that we, the purpose of that was to get alignment across all, all the services that are in GreenLake. So they all have the same common look and feel. Um, so that's the first step. Second step after that is to address some of the um, identity management and infrastructure management um, about the APIs. And so one of those is the unified endpoints. So as the different parts of the businesses that are involved in GreenLake evolved their original services, they had some implementation differences. So you saw this originally, we had an API that starts with API v1. Um, in the host name of that API, uh, we had the word data. So you had you know, data.cloud.hp.com. Um, the original intention was that that was the thing that distinguished it as being data services. Now, we're actually removing that idea from the platform and trying to focus on API groups that identify the service. So that's why we get backup recovery, disaster recovery, and so on as API groups. And we're removing the notion of whether this is data networking um, com or anything like that from the host name and coming up with common host names. So what you can see in the unified endpoints on the front are the host names that will be adopted. And as you can see, they're by region. So you'll get, I think we saw in a few slides earlier, you'll get um, EU API, GreenLake, HPE.com. And that will be for all services and it won't differentiate them. Um, the global one is for global services, such as the platform identity management um, and so on. Um, the second part is the unified authentication. Along with the uh, notion that we had different endpoints for different service groups, um, we also had um, tokens that were specific to those service groups. So if you wanted to get an access token, if you went to that screen that Ron was showing earlier, you get a drop down that says, which endpoint do you want this access token for? Do you want it for data in EU? Do you want it for c compute in US? You know, where you want it to go. So the idea is just to get rid of that and have a single unified token that, that can be used across the entire platform. And then you don't have to get different services for different, you know, different tokens for different services. So that's coming and that will be completely transparent. If you're already using tokens, you, you'll just suddenly start getting, without knowing it, you'll start getting tokens that can be used everywhere. If you know that you're now able to use tokens everywhere, then you can just start having a single client instead of multiple clients. Excellent. Okay. So moving on with the um, Green Lake APIs that we have at the moment, this is just current and future. So it's what's coming up next. So for the services, as you can see, we've got data source manager block, data service virtualization, and so on on the left there. Um, the ones that are coming up in, in the nearer future are things like file services and just disaster recovery. And as I said, the reason for that is they already exist as services and they're finalizing the um, standardization of their APIs and they will be released as soon as they're, as soon as they're ready. Um, the updated data ops and block is coming, but will be probably a little later. For features, um, we've got these ones down in the middle, uh, the current feature set. We've, um, and I I'm going to call out a couple of them. So dual authorization is when you have an operation that needs somebody else to authorize it. And that's typically used for things like deleting data. And it's up to the customers whether they want to set that for a particular feature or not. So if you want to make sure that your um, if you're going to delete a volume, it's a destructive operation. You want to set it so that in your account, that can only be done if a second person authorizes it. That's what your authorization is there for. Software catalog is for downloading and um, updates and initial installs for HPE owned software. And that's a global service. Um, for the future, the up and coming things that are coming out are web sockets and web hooks. So web sockets provide event distribution. So if, you, if you've got a service that currently polls, 
to see the state of a system. Instead, you'll be able to open a WebSocket and register for events about the resource, and you'll get a push notification of when the state changes for that resource. Um, webhooks, so you can register for integration, so do you get a delivery of um, resource state or resource events to you. Uh, tags creation, you can see on the left, we've got tag search. There's, there are a number of resources that currently have system defined tags in them. And the services are building out the ability to have user defined tags added to all of the resources. So these things that are coming up um, immediately in the very near future. Awesome. Okay, so all right, thank you, Paul. So you guys already heard, you know, from uh, that we have uh, uh, HPE from the architects, from the product management. We work together to make sure that you know we're going to achieve the goal that Ed Gardo mentioned. You know, Ed mentioned it's about having a unified API, common experiences, but you know, with all the security that is required. And the theme here is definitely is the modern API. Um, structure. So we use the API gateway because we have a lot of microservices running in the background. You know, we don't want to actually create many, many different type of <laughs> credential access token. We have one that suits unified them all in one time. All right. So quick summary before I jump into the demo. I think that I have a little bit of time for her today. See, the, 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 the API framework is pivoting. So from services oriented, now becoming a platform oriented. Now, there will be many, many different services added into it. Now, existing API, yeah, okay, maybe that we need to pivot. You know, originally, we come out with the more one model, but then we actually have to move into the different model. Hey, changes is important because we want to make sure that we can accomplish the bigger picture. So things will be uh, unified and then actually posted in the developer.greenlake.hpe.com moving forward. You know, so there won't be any existing API sitting in the cloud.hp.com. Common endpoint, single access tokens, and then you know there'll be more rich, um, uh, uh, what do you call a, uh, the additional, additional uh, uh, simpl simplification. <laughs> so you'll have a lot more resources such as the the Ansible Terraform you know, uh, scripts. Uh, you will have, you know, different way of configuring event notification. So you don't only use the API for polling purposes, but you have, you know, event that has actually pushed up back to you, or you want it to be live streaming, you know, everything will be there, but, you know, it's one step at a time, but we have to pivot the, uh, from the original, from the 21 version into the current one. And then that's the, the main reason of what we're talking about. In the meantime, don't be afraid because we will. I will demo to you that we can actually use both of the API in the same time. So let me just change my sharing to a different screen. Uh, take out that uh, new, sh okay, stop sharing. New share. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see the screen right now. So today, um, I'm going to demo how these APIs are actually used together. And then my uh, biggest point that I want to show you over here is that I'm using this tool. This is a Postman. Postman is actually is a very popular tool to exercise you know, API. The API specification that you can download, whether it's existing or whether it's uh, the current one or the new one or the future one, you can import them into a uh, group that's called collections. And I'm using the feature from the uh, Postman to create a single authentication, means that, you know, create a single access token to be used for all of those groups. And you can see that this is the existing API. The, I call it the API V1. It's actually, it's a folder under these collections. With that, I also presented the <clears throat> new groups such as data services, virtualization, backup and recovery. There are actually two different versions. Uh, I'm sorry, I got three, but I'm just testing around, <laughs> just hacking around. We're in Hack Shack anyway. And then of course you got the private cloud business edition. So all of these APIs, you know, that are sitting under this tree, they can use the same access token and then they can actually be authenticated by the same access token and be able to off exercise them. All right. So what are the use cases that we want to do today? One, 
today I am actually going to demo the creation of the data store. Now, I don't want to flip back and forth, but in the GreenLake uh, uh, workspace that I have, I've already deployed the PCBE. Inside that uh, PCBE, the Private Cloud Business Edition, it's connected to a DHCI, so it's a, it's a disaggregated HCI, and it's connected to the uh, 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 Electra, uh, I believe it's, maybe it's not Electra, but it's, you know, one of the Nimble class family. It's a hybrid version. I want to create a data store on top of it. The operations or the API used for that, I'm actually going to show you guys here, is this. You know, it's called the uh, post vert slash virtualization v1 beta one data stores. And in that, because this is a post operation, you need to provide request body JSON. So you need to actually build that. I've already pre filled some of those information, such as the in type of the uh, the name of the data stores that are going to be deployed, the type is default, the size is about 10 terabytes. But I need to figure it out. Other information, such as the hypervisor cluster ID, the storage system ID, the provision policy ID. So this three needs to be discovered. But before doing that, I'm going to make sure that I'm authenticated. So I use the automation from the uh, Postman to obtain the access token because I've entered the client credentials and use that token for all the exercise that we need to do. First thing to first, we're gonna discover the uh, storage array. And if you look at it, you know, from this API family, storage array sits in the existing API, the API V1. And that will be somewhere here. <laughs> okay, wrong tree there. All right, using this API to get all API uh, storage system, I should be able to discover that storage API thing. I mean, obviously I've already executed. Let me just, you know, for the purpose of proving that this is working, I'm gonna exercising it right now. Hopefully it will come back and it come back very fast actually. So from the response, we can tell I have an array, which is the HF60, which is actually is the nimble gen, gen, gen five with the uh, hybrid. And this is the key over here. I need that IDs. So I would need to copy that system IDs and then add that into my JSON body that is actually required for to create the data store. What's next? Well, we need to figure it out the hypervisor cluster ID. Hypervisor cluster ID is an API that is available under the virtualization group. In fact, um, here it is, I'm sharing it right, right away for you. You have a, uh, in, uh, there's an API for you to get the information of all cluster under the hypervisors that you actually have been onboarded under PCBE actually in this scenario. And what I do is I created a query specifically with the parameters that point to the array that I'm using. So I'm sorry, I, I missed that information. So I know the uh, name of the array that I'm using. So I'm using that name as a filter and then run this API to query that uh, array so that I know exactly where this particular storage system is actually is onboarded or what cluster is that sitting. It's sitting on the city CDS TPM dash cluster one. And the ID of that is here. So again, you know, I'm gonna copy that ID again from this site, from the response, not the site, <laughs> from the response and fill the, the hypervisor cluster ID information, okay? One more data we need, provisioning policy, policy ID. And then this is actually something that deals with the private cloud business edition. So it's a API that is actually is part of the PCBE. So if you drop down the PCBE, you have this concept of called the VM provisioning policy. That's what I need to actually discover. And then I specifically look for uh, the uh, the policy ID that is actually is related to that particular DHCI. And I look for, actually, I'm going to create a VVOL type of data store. So I make sure that I use the VM provisioning that is based on the VVOL. Fill in all the filter. And then I use select in order to display this information. Simple, because otherwise, you know, this will fill up all the, uh, the display. And then it's hard to display that and obtained that 
VM provisioning policy ID. Same thing as before, copy and then pasting them into here. All right, so we got all the components that we required, part of the JSON body request that we'll be using to send this API. Okay, now this is a post API. So if you actually perform the send operation, the operation itself will be executed asynchronously, it means that it's running in the background. So you will actually receive the status right away as accepted here. But how do you know if that operation in the background is completed? That's where we use the, uh, the one of the uh, API that I mentioned before, the async desk operation. So you use API async desk operation resource to figure it out whether that operation in the background is completed. I'm just going to use some of the tools here, uh, assign that test ID that is actually recovered from the uh, location field inside the headers of the response, and then use that async uh, I, uh, operations and then feed that task ID into the uh, into one of the field in the parameters here so in the in the in the uh, I'm sorry in the API URL information, and then execute them. This operation may take some times, but my point over here, you know, you can use the async operation ID based on the task ID that it, that task ID that it was returned to monitor this. So if this is akin or similar to what, you know, looking at the task menu inside the HPE GreenLake. And from here, you can see the steps that's going on. The task is created, the task is running. Oh my goodness. It looks like that we failed to create the data store. I think that might probably I ex actually executed uh, the, uh, the 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 operation of the with the same name. <laughs> Let me just change the name. All right, it's very easy. That's why we use API. You know, you want to create a different uh, data store name. Send that again, and as as the previous one, we actually get uh, accepted. Set that as a variable in task ID. And okay, finger cross. All right, let's see. Oh, okay, it's going on. It's actually, it's creating the data store. It's validating the data store and it runs about 80%. So guys, you know, you've seen that with this particular uh, uh, Munch and Learn, you actually discovered that this API families, they are all part of the families. That means that you can't really <laughs> use one or the other. In order to accomplish this uh, use cases for data ops, such as deploying your uh, data store or more, you know, maybe deploying your workload, everything is actually get together, you know, and, and used together. And then, you know, we work, to, we work in the futures to make sure that they are is easier and, and actually available from one point of info information rather than having having to multiple points of information. Uh, with that, I'm just going to close my uh, presentations today or, or, or the much and learn today. And I'm just going to- Ron, there was a, an additional survey or poll that you wanted to bring up. Should I- Oh yeah, that's that? true. That's yes. true. Last one. Last one. We want to figure it out what you guys are planning to do. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. So from this, Paul, I'd like to understand, you know, what would you think as the most important um, tools or, or resources that you will be using? And I'm just throwing it out to you guys, you know. Uh, things have been mentioned by Edgardo, by Paul, you know, we're going to come up, but it's just that, you know, what, how do you, how, how can we actually measure, you know, what are things that are more important to you in order for you to accomplish your uh, uh, use case? I know the time is already out, but uh, yeah, just give me about <laughs> two minutes. But go ahead. Yeah. So I'll leave it just a few seconds more just to to bring up as much answers as possible. Uh, well, I don't see there much coming up. So just here you go, sharing the result right now. So. Ah, okay. Ah, actually the toolkit. Got it. So yeah, so something that the administrator can actually use 
CLI base to, to, to do the operation. And then the second one, of course, I can see the hardcore developer here say that I need library so that I can actually create my own, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, automation. Thank you so much. So we uh, have one last poll. And so go ahead with your conclusion. And in the meantime, yeah, this is the, uh, so with the presentations that I've provided over here, I'm actually providing you some links and then you can actually click on those presentation and get to the, uh, some of those information. I actually created some blocks to write, to go through things, uh, to go through, you know, how do you use those type of API getting started with it and have the feeling what kind of the understanding of what particular use cases I want to use, which particular API, even though eventually you're going to be combining them and you will look at it at those blog posts. And then more importantly, you know, just like what, Frederick and, and the team said, you know, join the HPE developer workspace. You're not alone, okay? <laughs> I live this, although I don't code every day, but I understand, you know, that 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 feeling, you know, where the situations where you got this use case, but how in the world I can achieve that with the API. In that uh, developer works, Slack workspace, you can ask the questions, you know, and then be able to, uh, 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 to get some uh, information from different people. But if you do have a good use cases, share it inside the developer workspace also, because that's what the community means. And with that, you know, I'm gonna close this uh, uh, presentation today. Thank you very much for your attention. And thank you for everybody that are part of this uh, presentation, so, you know, Paul at, at, and Frederick. Uh, uh, as I as I've mentioned before, you know, hey, let's talk about it in the Slack workspace. Thank you. Exactly. Thanks a lot, Ron, and thanks a lot to Edgardo and Paul as well for their for their for their participation to the meetup. Uh, as I said, I mean, there will be uh, four coming meetups uh, in uh, in June. So uh, we've already shared in the Q and A some of the the links to the replays and to the to the planning of the of the new workshop. Oh, sorry. Of the new meetups and the new, uh, I would say, munch and learn. So have a look at them. And uh, well, I'll thank you all and I'll wish you a very good end of your day. Thanks a lot. That was a very uh, interesting and I would say I learned a lot about the new whole community API. So it's always very, very useful. I'm pretty sure the audience also did uh, did learn a lot. It seems that uh, the, the last poll was uh, again showing that it was a very good usage of their time and it was technical enough and so on and so forth. So. We'll be sharing this result with you after the call, but uh, they, they were really, really good so far. So with that being said, uh, I wish you a very good end of your day and we'll start the call now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for your, for your attendance.